Well, today we just want to show a little bit more about our width measurement application uh, with our 440 sensor. So we have the 440 sensor installed and then you have the web coming over it. Uh, we have installed two support rollers so that when the web moves it doesn't flutter too much. Um, we want to avoid fluttering whenever we do web width measurement. This sensor is actually connected to uh, Ethernet IP so you can connect it to a, a, a PLC like this or we also have a web browser interface on the computer that uh, you can connect to. So uh, the main things are here is how far the sensor is from the web. Uh, right now we've installed it at about five millimeters from there. That's the optimal distance that we recommend. The sensor is installed facing up. Um, uh, that is good, but just to avoid any dust and other accumulation, uh, it may be better off to face the sensor down so that it's looking down towards the web. A few other things that we need to consider is the, the, the free space behind the sensor. Uh, we want to maintain about six inches of free space so that nothing in the background uh, is uh, seen by the sensor. Uh, that's the optimal um, uh, way in which uh, we can get the best results. Uh, there's also a way for us to uh, get the maximum scattering out of the sensor. Uh, if we want to do that, what we would do is we will raise up this roller so that the web comes at an angle. About 10, uh, 15 to 20 degrees is the angle that we want and it depends upon the orientation of the sensor. So if, if, we, if you want to get the maximum scat, uh, scattering, what we would do is we will raise up this roller so that the web comes this way. Uh, but those are the few things that uh, you want to consider before installing um, our 440 for width measurement application. Uh, other things to consider is this free span doesn't have any twisting. So we don't want to install the sensor right next to a dancer roller or right next to a web guide. We want to install the sensor between two fixed rollers so that we have a fixed pan and then web doesn't flutter. Uh, that will be the ideal scenario. What we are going to show right now is how do we get this up and running. Uh, right now, as you can see, uh, we have the power on to the sensor. It's connected to Ethernet IP. Right now, it's connected to uh, a network device like a router or a switch. Uh, so you can uh, connect to the sensor um, through the network. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can directly connect the sensor to the computer or you can directly connect this to your PLC or our PLC for that matter. So uh, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to connect it to both the computer and the PLC through a network. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is to connect the um, sensor uh, to the PLC. One of the first things that we want to do is find the IP address. Um, once the sensor is connected and powered up and connected to your network device, you can pull up um, a utility called ipconfig. Uh, we have information about that on our website. You can go uh, once you open up, open up, open up that program. It will show what device there is, and what's the IP address of that. Right now, the device is set to have a DHCP set automatically, and uh, it has an IP address 0.0.0. .0 .0. Uh, this is happening mainly because the gateway doesn't match. So what we would do is to make sure that the get the gateway matches. Uh, let's do that. The gateway is one 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 and IP address of this device. So right click configure on IP address one sixty-eight on dot one hundred. So once we do that, uh, we set a, a static IP address with the gateway and everything. Um, now we can right click and pull up a web browser. 
And that's going to bring up our dashboard. So this dashboard basically shows us uh, several things. Uh, the width measurement is shown here. So this is the web and that the width measurement is 155 and something millimeters. We also have a filtered width measurement. Uh, we have a filtering algorithm that would take the, uh, um, the filtered value of the raw measurement. And then edge location, uh, which is left edge. So that's saying where this edge is. And then the right edge is showing where the other edge is. And then uh, within our software, we also have what we call it as a quality factor, uh, which is basically think of it as how good of an image or how good of an edge that is. So it says that the left edge has a quality factor of 300 and something, and the right edge has a quality factor of 100 and something. So uh, this is a, a easy and quick and easy way to test our sensor, make sure everything works fine. We have a plot that um, shows the width measurement. We also have other things that we can do with the sensor in terms of adjusting the brightness. All of these are shown here. So the, uh, the idea, uh, the main thing that we want to do is make sure that the quality factor on the both edges are pretty high. Uh, and as we mentioned before, one of the things that improves the scattering is angling the sensor. Um, either we can lift this roller up or angle the sensor so that we get a pretty good quality factor. So if you can notice, when I move that, uh, since we don't get a good uh, scattering, the quality factor went down. But uh, if we install the sensor at the right, uh, at about 15 degrees uh, angle, then we get a pretty good quality factor signal and then you get the measurement there. So um, uh, this particular um, web browser interface allows you to um, um, pan the data, plot the data, and you can also save the data. If you click on the save, uh, it stores that data as an Excel file uh, with um, all the information that we collect, um, which is shown here, um, such as, uh, the, the brightness and, and uh, the edge position and the width and everything. So uh, that's basically about the, uh, the web browser interface. And as you can see, we can run the web and it collects the data uh, as the web is moving over the sensor. Um, let's move on to um, the uh, PLC and kind of show you how we can set up that PLC. Uh, this is a special um, software that we install on it. Uh, basically for customers who doesn't want to uh, set up their own system, uh, they have the ability to use our uh, PLC that we supply uh, to do width measurement and also have the ability to provide a trigger measurement whenever uh, the width varies. So one of the first things that we want to do to get uh, the PLC communicate with the sensor is to um, tell the PLC what the IP address of the sensor is. In order to do that, we're going to press these corners one after the other and then go to offline. And this shows up the main screen here in the offline uh, menu. We click on peripheral and within the peripheral, uh, we're going to select device slash PLC setting. And here we're going to use the Ethernet IP explicit messaging protocol. So that's the one that we're going to select. And then uh, these settings are fine, uh, which is the standard setting. Uh, the main thing that we want to set is the IP address of the device. So we're going to go click on device and then set the IP address. So right now it's set to 192.168.1.8. So our uh, sensor IP address uh, that we uh, manually set was 192.168.1.100. So we're gonna type in 100, enter, and exit, and then save changes. 
So now the PLC is going to reboot with the uh, new uh, IP address. Uh, we just have one more step to do to connect the PLC to the sensor or connect the PLC to communicate with the sensor and that's to enable the uh, Ethernet communication. So in order to do that we're going to go into the settings and communication and turn on Ethernet IP. Once we do that now we got the measurement from the sensor. Uh, so this is the real-time width from the sensor that is going here. Now if the customer wants to uh, set a few things uh, for example if they want to um, teach um, the sensor uh, so that um, we want to avoid any inaccuracies, inaccuracies in the measurement what we would do is um, we would put the web where um, at the location where they desire it and measure the width of the web and then let's say in this case it's 155 millimeters we would go in and press this 155 and press record width now they can also set uh, warning and alarm ranges so for example we want to say alarm is for uh, 4 millimeters warning is for 1 millimeter and go in so as long as the width is within that range which is 155 we thought the sensor for that width uh, it'll show green and whenever the width goes about a millimeter high or low the amber would show up and then when it goes about the warning the red would show up so and that's pretty much it right now we're seeing the width variation because of the curls and all these things in the web uh, we're trying to show uh, or simulate uh, some of the things that you would see uh, when the width varies by these uh, curling There's also an ability for the uh, customer to set recipes. So if they have different product width, you can uh, set what is the nominal width, what is the alarm width, what is the warning width, things like that. You can load them, you can save them, um, uh, um, and so on and so forth. And also, there's an ability to connect a USB here directly and uh, save the data uh, through the USB. Uh, um, on, on, on this PLC right here and this PLC can be connected to a uh, signal uh, alarm signal uh, lighting system with uh, green amber and red uh, so that uh, it's uh, readily visible for the operator running the machine so that's pretty much our width uh, measurement uh, system using our WPS 440 sensor